Hey guys, really fun video for you today because we are starting a new series here at TFL, the Mini Budget Fun Series, a challenge to buy a Mini for under $10,000. That's a GP. That's the highest performance Mini they sold in 2013. That was not under $10,000. You are correct, sir. I bought the most rare and yet the world's worst Mini GP sold in America because this is a hot mess and oh man, I did something stupid, Tommy. I'd say so and you spent more than 10K, I bet. The purpose of the series is to show you that you can have a lot of fun for not a lot of money. Or in my case, spend a lot of money and not have a lot of fun. Let me explain. Because of this, I did something really stupid and that was buy this Mini sight unseen from Trophy Motors down in Texas. And they told me that there were some things wrong with it. Namely, that the airbag light was on that the ring around the front headlight did not fit and that there may have been some work done to it. That is an understatement because this Mini is a hot mess. They did give me about $700 discount. They wanted $14,500. I ended up paying $13,800 for it. But when we go over everything that's wrong with it, I think you'll agree that I overpaid. In this first episode, we're gonna compare the two cars, see which one is the better deal and which one is the bigger disaster. And then in the second episode, we're gonna fix them up, make them look cooler, make them run properly. In the third episode, we're gonna take them to the track, a couple zero to 60 drag races. My dad and I are gonna see who's the better driver. And lastly, we're gonna give them to the American Stig to see which one is actually the better car. And finally, we're gonna get him a praise and see who lost the most money. I said lost on purpose. Tommy, one last thing, at the end of the series, I will be selling that GP to whoever wants it out there. But before you decide you want this thing, you should probably make sure that you watch the rest of this video to find out exactly what's wrong with it. But if you still want it, send me an email at info at TFL car and we will sell it at the end of the series. No one's gonna want it. You know, it's one of 500 imported. It's still a rare mini and we are going to fix it. Let's start by showing them what's wrong with yours and then I'll go through my laundry list of problems with the GP. So this is my mini. I bought it for $6,000. It's a 2010 Cooper S with a very special upgrade underneath the hood. I'll show you that in a sec. But it's a pretty good little car, 100,000 miles, and it's been very well taken care of. Let's go over the exterior blemishes. On the outside, it's in very good shape. We do have a little bit of peeling here on one of the headlight rings, and there are definitely a number of rock chips here in the front. I did purchase it with a burnt out marker light up here, but that's a very cheap and easy fix. I've already had to replace the windshield because there was a big crack in it, and that was about $250. These plastic light lenses were very clouded up. I have polished them, and they still look pretty crummy. Back here, there's a little dent and scrape that's just gonna be something I have to live with. And then back here, you'll notice the badge is missing its red on the John Cooper Works logo. But overall, this car is in excellent condition on the outside. You know, it's definitely a little bit worn, but someone has really taken care of it. No accidents, all the panels line up perfectly. All right, let me use my magnetic pointer to show you everything that is wrong on the exterior of this car. But before we even get to that, this headlight, which is a Xeon headlight, does not work. And this silver ring, which is now taped to the car, actually fell off on the highway, so I had to go back and get it. That is obviously broken. There's also overspray right there, so you can tell by using this magnet, for instance, that right there is Bondo. Right here, Bondo. Compare it to, like, right there, where it actually sticks. <laughs> Let's keep going. A dead giveaway that there's Bondo here is of course the fact that this filler cap does not fit. This little side skirt is the wrong 
color. It's black. It also doesn't have the little winglet over here on the other side. So this whole side is Bondo. Here it actually sticks. So what I suspect happened was the car was hit in the front and the car was hit in the back. Now that's the major stuff that's wrong with it. There's a lot of minor stuff cosmetically. For instance, if you look right there, it's all scratched to hell. If you look back here, the red is missing on the John Cooper works. There's a nice little scratch or dent right there. I mean, there's just too many things cosmetically wrong with it from the outside to go over. But you've made a list, Tommy. I have made a list because you're missing a ton of them. I keep going. Uh, the Scoop 6 sticker is worn out. Yep. Uh, the stickers don't match on the right side of the car. All four wheels are horrendously curbed. Yep. Uh, the wipers are completely shot. Yep. Um, the tires are crap and the hood doesn't fit. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's pretty much <laughs> a cosmetic mess. Uh, but it gets worse. Um, when I bought the car, the dealer said there was one light on and that light was supposed to be the airbag light, which is bad enough. Yeah. But after driving it for five minutes, uh, the brake light came on and of course the TPMS light came on. So now I have bad brake sensor and I suspect I'm missing a TPMS sensor in one of the wheels. Or it's died. Or it's died. It's probably more likely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I got ripped off. I mean, that's the only way you could, right? You could put yeah, this. But keep in mind, like, a this, is, this is the worst mini GP in the country. Yeah, but a typical GP in good condition is like 20 to 25 grand. So there's a reason this one was 13 8. Now, unlike my dad who bought that super rare GP, if you're just looking for a standard Cooper S Mini, you've got a lot of options, which meant that I was very picky when purchasing this car. And clearly the previous owners have taken really nice care of it on the inside. The seats are in perfect condition, the dash is in perfect condition, the rooster red trim here on the dash is nice, all the cubbies open and work like new, the radio is great. Uh, it really is nice inside this Mini. Plus, I've got wood trim in places, so it's very 1980s Buick in here. Yeah, it just gets worse in here. Let's start with this. This little vent doesn't fit, and this really beautiful leather dash is coming apart up here. I think somebody drove this thing hard and put it away wet. And when I say put it away wet, I mean they didn't put it away, they just let it sit in the sun. The seat is starting to come apart. Speakers only work on the passenger side. The radio knob, which the dealer told me about, is the wrong radio knob. It's broken. Uh, it just looks really shabby in here. And then piece of resistance has to be right here as you can see the handle has broken off the side and uh, it was in here somewhere but it's now missing all in all um, like I said it's a pretty much a hot mess in here the owner I bought it from owned this car for a few years and put about 40,000 miles on it and in that time invested $6,200 into keeping this car on the road so it's had a lot of maintenance done but it still has one fatal flaw, which is the engine. Now, many people call this engine the N14. And let me show you the things that commonly fail on the N14. So starting in the front, turbos fail uh, because the lines to the turbos clog up and stop providing oil. On the side, the high pressure fuel pump fails all the time. All four coil packs are a disaster. They fail regularly. And then the timing chain tensioner fails. And then the timing chains fail, destroying the whole engine. And these are all regular fail points on the N14 engine. So even though this one has been well maintained, I'm expecting some issues down the road. This particular one has something cool on it. It's got the JCW or John Cooper Works power kit, which raises the power from 172 to 200 horsepower via a tune, an intake, and an exhaust. All right, so you can tell right there where the car was hit. This is not straight by any means. This has been a hack job of Bondo on metal. It's a real shame for a classic car to have that kind of, well, shoddy repair. But the good news is under the hood. This, unlike Tommy's, is not the N14. It's the next generation N18, even though the two cars are the same generation. And this John Cooper works engine puts out 211 horsepower and it's a gem of an engine and that's the great thing about this car i know it's got a lot of issues but it drives really well i mean 
probably one of the best driving hot hatches that I have ever been in. So I think now it's time to stop taking a dump on this car and let's switch vehicles. I'll drive Tommy's and he'll drive mine and we'll compare. I'm very excited about this car because the GP is very special and it is actually very rare. So every seven years, Mini builds a super limited, stripped down, high performance model called the GP. They did one in 2006, they did one in 2013, and they're doing one in 2020. And they only build 2,000 worldwide and 500 are imported to the US. And these are extremely expensive cars. When they were new, over $40,000. Let's start with the suspension differences. Coil over height adjustable suspension. 13 inch disc brakes in the front. No cruise control on the steering wheel. No steering wheel buttons whatsoever, in fact. They pulled out the rear seats and put in this luggage brace. Uh, there's no rear wiper. There's no rear speakers. Everything on this car was done to make it as stripped down, as lightweight, and as high performance as possible. And let me tell you what, even this one, oh, it's pretty darn fun to drive. All right, I'm in Tommy's car. And I gotta say, this interior is really nice. I mean, um, this car has almost 50,000 more miles, but yeah, judging by the interior, the seats, the dashboard, all of the plastics, this looks like a much younger car. I bet you if you came into both of these vehicles, you'd think this is a newer car. Steering is tight, it's super direct. The brakes are incredible. That's what these cars were known for. Some of the best brakes in the industry. And the engine, actually the engine feels pretty good. Turbo hits strong, about 3,000 RPM, and it just pulls and pulls and pulls all the way to the rev line of 6,000. Now, I have a feeling that this car has been tracked pretty hard <laughs> but even still, <laughs> it is so fun to drive. Wow, this one is quick. The GP is quicker. I know there's not a lot more horsepower, but the GP just feels a little bit more nimble. This one is a little bit tamer, not quite as loud, probably less sound deadening, a little bit heavier, a little bit more comfortable. The suspension is certainly more compliant and a little bit more civilized. Which one do I like better? You know, ask me that question at the end of this video series. Now, I'm really curious as to see what Tommy's going to do with this, because that is a badass looking car. This looks like something my mom will drive. You know, Tommy, I have to admit, inside your car is a real gem, but dude, oh, I'm falling asleep looking at that thing. Compared to the GP, it's pretty mild. Yeah, I agree. It's extremely boring to look at, but in the next episode, we're going to make it look extremely cool. Yeah, and I'm going to go through my laundry list of issues and fix them so that you can see just how much money I'm going to have to put into this car to actually bring it up to a standard that I would consider drivable. Well, be sure to stay tuned for the coming episodes because we're going to have a lot of fun with these two little cars and probably spend a lot of money. I've already spent a lot of money. All right, see you guys next time. Ciao.